Hi guys, it's Lizzie. Um, I'm back, first of all, and hopefully it's time to stay. Now, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you might be like, Lizzie, where the hell have you been for the past two days? Well, I was in the hospital. And I finally have the answer so that I can kind of explain what's been going on the past couple of weeks. Um, because it all kind of goes together. The reason I took a week off a couple of weeks back, a couple weeks back ago, I tweeted that I wasn't going to put a video because I was going to the doctor, um, or no, that I was in the hospital, yeah, and then I said I wasn't going to do videos the rest of that week because I had to make some doctor's appointments and figure out some stuff, and I thought I had all the answers, um, and then I ended up going back to the hospital last night and they kept, or sorry, not last night. I went back to the hospital two days ago, and they kept me there until this afternoon. These are all layman's terms. Please keep in mind I'm not a doctor, so uh, don't trust me on diagnosing yourself this way. If you think you have something going on with you, just quick disclaimer, go see a doctor. Don't just trust me on this video. This is just how my body has been processing it lately. Starting back in January, um, I started having some changes that happened and couldn't quite place what was going on. Um, I started drinking a lot of water, I started peeing a lot, and I was just like, I'm drinking a lot of water, so this makes sense. I was sleeping a ton, I was having these weird, irritable stages, and then like, and, well, middle of February into March, we were like, Lizzie, you've been losing weight, you look good, and I was like, thanks guys, I haven't really done anything though. Um, and then the weekend of the 19th, I guess, um, I started having these weird chest pains. And so I called my mom and I was like, I don't really know what's going on, but I'm having these chest pains. My mom was like, maybe it's heartburn, you know. Um, if it's still going on or it gets worse, go, you know, see the health people at your school. So on the 22nd, I went to the physician's assistant that we have at school, and I was like, I'm having these weird chest pains, and then I was like, also, I don't know if this kind of goes along with it, but here's some changes that have been going on. I was like, I'm just not really sure that I should be drinking this much water, because I was drinking about six to eight liters of water a day. And when I said that, he got a little worried. So he sent me to go get an EKG, and um, he tested my blood sugar before he sent me, because he was like, uh, is anybody in your family diabetic? And I was like, no. And so he tested me, and he's like, okay, you're at 68, which is a little bit low, even for a normal person. So he's like, okay, um, go eat something and then go to this other doctor that's like not quite the hospital, but it's like in between where we are in the hospital, um, or like between like my school's nurse and a hospital ER visit. So I went to the place and I was like, my school sent me here to get an EKG. And I was like, also I had this going on. And they were like, okay. And so they did some blood work. They did an EKG. And then they tested my blood sugar again. And they're like, your blood sugar is so high that our machine can't register it, which means it's over 400. Now this was only an hour later that I had jumped from 68 to over 400. So they sent me to the ER um, to get tested and to see if they could read what my blood sugar was. Um, to hook me up to an IV to lower that and then to get another EKG. And so I went to the ER. I was there for like six hours. They finally got my blood sugar down to under 200. Um, and they did another EKG. And they're like, there's nothing in your chest that we can see going on. Um, and they were like, but you are diabetic. And I was like, okay. And they were like, and we don't really know because you have a lot of type 1 symptoms, but type 2 is more what people your age would have. Um, so they're like, we're gonna send you to a normal doctor to get checked out. Um, and then when 
when you go see an endocrinologist, which is somebody who specializes in diabetes, um, they will be able to tell you if you're type 1 or type 2. So I go to see this doctor, who's not my normal doctor, um, but he was doing my baseline testing and um, getting me on some sort of insulin so that my body would work. Because if you don't know, diabetes is basically, there are two types, there's type 1, where your body does not produce insulin. Your system has attacked itself in a way that you no longer produce insulin, which is what your body needs to process carbs and sugar, which are basically the components of everything you eat. Carbs get processed as sugar, so without insulin your body can only handle so much of it. Um, but a normal person produces insulin so they can process the rest of it. Type 2, your body is not producing sufficient insulin. So you have some that your body is producing, but it's not enough to process what you're eating. So, um, the first doctor that I went to, uh, he checked all the stuff that he could, um, and he goes, basically, he told me I couldn't be type 1 because of my age, um, which is not true, which you'll see why. Um, but so he started treating me as a type 2 diabetic. Fast forward a week, I've been taking the medicine he prescribed. Nothing has changed. My blood sugar is super high still. Um, a normal person's blood sugar is between 80 and about 120, dependent on certain conditions. Um, my blood sugar never went below 200 at the point of me being diagnosed. So I'm feeling awful. My blood sugar is super high all the time. Um, and the only thing though is it was staying below 400. If it had gone above 400, I would have had to go back to the hospital. But it was staying under 400, so I called the doctor uh, to see, after talking with a family friend who's a nurse, and she was like, I think you just need to get your medicine up. So I called the doctor's office, and the doctor I had seen was on vacation, so I went to a different doctor. Now this doctor read through my chart, did some testing, and she goes, and starts, she goes and starts asking me about um, prior to being diagnosed and asking like when did my symptoms start, um, have I ever had a doctor mention that I had bl high blood sugar, um, all of this stuff and I answered truthfully my symptoms had only started in January and that I had never been told I had high blood sugar or anything like that. So that's when she goes, I think honestly you're type 1. She goes, your symptoms have only been here for three months. Whereas, if I was type 2, I would have shown signs of high blood sugar for three to five years prior to being diagnosed. And so, she goes, I think you're type 1, but I can't change anything because I don't have uh, the medicine degree to say this. She's like, I'm like 75% sure though. So she upped my medicine, and she was like, but when you see your endocrinologist, they'll be able to diagnose you properly. Now I'm, my first appointment with my endocrinologist is a week from tomorrow, when I'm home. And so, I was like, okay, that was last week. So, Tuesday, I wake up, and I'm super high to start with. I'm over 300, which is awful. Like, it, you don't feel good when you're over 300. Um, so I went back to school. I'd been in the city celebrating my birthday. I came back to school. I took my blood sugar after eating breakfast. I was still high. Um, I took it uh, before I went to eat lunch, and I dropped down to 272, and I was like, okay. It's dropping, but I'm gonna eat, so it's gonna jump a little bit, and I was like, I'll probably just be back in the 300s when I test after dinner. Um, and I tested after dinner, and I was at 459. Now, the magic number for me to go back to the hospital was 400, so I had my friend drive me, and I got tested, 
Um, I tested and they had like basically been ready. They were ready to send me back. They just were waiting on a bed in the ER. So um, I had probably been there for an hour and I was still way above 300. I think I was at 380 something at that point. Um, so I dropped a little bit, but I was still so drastically about to go back into 400s and hadn't even eaten at that point. Um, so they put me in the ER. They gave me some fluids and stuff, but I was still testing super high. I was staying at about 383. They took a bunch of vials of blood. They took blood from my artery, which is how they test for ketones, um, which is something that it gets produced when your body isn't working properly, when you're not processing things. And it's super dangerous because it can cause you to go into a coma, basically. So they took a lot of blood and tested all that for different things. They did a urine sample, they did all these different tests, and my doctor comes back and he's like, I looked at your original labs, and he's like, some of these tests should have been done then. He's like, because I'm pretty sure you're type 1. So what they decided was to admit me into the hospital, um, keep me on fluids all night, and give me about 30 units of insulin. Part of that being fast active, part of it being slow active, which is what I now have to do daily. So I was checked into the hospital um, at about 1 a.m. and I was still at about 300 and something. They checked my blood at 4 a.m. and I had dropped down to 73. So they gave me some sugar, well, they gave me some carbs, because carbs is what I have to watch for. And they kept me in the hospital until this morning because even yesterday it was a little bit up and down. They had to adjust my baselines and I'm even gonna be going back to the doctor next week before my endo appointment so that we can just make sure that everything is kind of staying stable and that they don't need to adjust it more so. Because what I'm basically gonna have to do from now on is every night I have a long lasting insulin I have to take. I have a short active insulin that I do corrections when needed. So I measure, I take my blood sugar when I wake up, before every meal, and before I go to bed. Before every meal, if I'm at certain high numbers, I can give myself more insulin to hopefully bring it down and to process the food I'm about to eat. The long lasting insulin helps to process some of that, uh, to process some of the carbs that I'm taking in during the day. The sh short active is kind of to help if I'm above that because we haven't quite found my sweet spot yet of how much short active and how much fast active I need. Um, that's going to be over time with an endocrinologist, but they got me to a stable enough point that I could come back to school. So that's kind of where I am right now. I am 21 and just got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, which is usually thought of as juvenile do that. Diabetes. The reason I felt I needed to talk about this is two reasons. First of all, I wanted to explain to you guys why I keep running off and why I'm having all these doctor's appointments, but I was waiting until I got the actual, this is what you're diagnosed as, before giving you guys, or before talking with you guys. Um, until yesterday, I did not have an actual diagnosis. I was just told I had diabetes and was going to be treated as a type 2 until I could get confirmed as either a type 2 or a type 1 because they didn't want to put me on insulin if I didn't need, or they didn't want to put me on injectable insulin, um, which more so the short active, until they knew what was going on. So they put me on an oral long active insulin was what they had done. But that oral long active one was not doing what it needed to because I'm not type 2. The type 1 injectable short and long active insulins are actually working. I've definitely seen changes. I was in the 100s earlier in the day yesterday and then I shot back up which is why they are adjusting it still. So we're still working on it but I definitely feel better. There was a moment I was talking to one of my friends and I was saying about how there was this moment when they first gave me insulin when they, because they gave me, as I said, 30 units, which I think it was 15, no, it was 10, because they upped that, that's what they upped yesterday. It was like 10 units of short, of long active, 
and about 20 units of fast active being that they put some of it in my IV and some of it just straight actually injecting into me. And about 10 minutes after I got all that, there was this moment where I was just like, whoa, everything's suddenly clearer and crisper. And that's when they were like, okay. I said it to my doctor too, and they were like, yeah, definitely type one. And the second reason I wanted to talk about this was when I first started looking more into diabetes when I got diagnosed originally, and they were like, you could be type one, but we think you're type two. I started doing research and there was a decent amount on type two, especially because I already had information because my doctor gave me a bunch on type two. But everything I saw on type one was aimed at children or well, parents of children. It was like when your child gets diagnosed, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, well, okay, but like, I'm not a child, I'm an adult. So, and like everything was taught, uh, written in like kid words and like explaining it in a way to your child and all of this. And I'm like, okay, but like I'm explaining it to myself. I'm, a, I'm okay. And so then I turned to what I normally turn to, which is the YouTube community. And everywhere I turned, type one information was plentiful, but it was aimed at people who their children just got diagnosed or it was coming from people who are teenagers and adults now, but got diagnosed at 9 or 11 and stuff like that. And I found, I think, one person on YouTube um, that was a type 1 who she was, it was a like, day in the life video and she was like, oh, I am a type 1, but I've only been diagnosed for a year and a half and I'm 23. And I was like, okay, someone else. And that's kind of why I wanted to share this was for somebody else who might be looking out there and wanting to know more about, you know, what's it like being a, an adult with it? Because everywhere I turn, everyone's like, oh, type 1 is a child diabetes. I'm like, no, it's not. I'm 21 and I just got officially diagnosed. And so I don't want someone else to be in the place that I was where I felt so alone because I'm an adult being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and not a kid is, you know, 7 to 14 whose pancreas gave out on them then. So what does this mean now? Well, it means that I have to change how I'm eating. Um, I have a number of carbs I'm allowed to eat per meal. And if I go above that, it messes with my blood sugar. If I don't eat it, it sort of messes with my blood sugar because I do my corrective insulin before meals. Um, I take a certain amount to correct for and to have insulin for my meals. So if I'm not staying around that number, it can mess with it and make me go low. It also means that I am gonna occasionally do some videos that are focusing on diabetes stuff. I'm gonna be traveling soon. I'm taking a couple trips. I'm taking a weekend trip this weekend to go visit a job, but it's a driving trip, so I'll be driving by myself and I'll have insulin and stuff with me. And then I fly home next week. But in the beginning of May, I'm traveling to California for school. And so I might do, what is it like to travel with diabetes? Or what's a day in the life of diabetes? And I am gonna do some recipes and cooking videos that I'll put up that are obviously gonna be more focused towards my high protein, low carb slash counting carb diet. Um, so, It'll have some of that focus. I might do what I eat as a diabetic because there's actually quite a lot you can eat. You just have to know how to count it. So stuff like that's going to be thrown into the mix coming up. But I wanted to talk to you guys and kind of explain what was going on because I hadn't been and it was mainly because I needed to make sure I had all the right information before I started saying stuff even though it's about me. We'll hopefully get back to some of the normaler videos uh, this week. I'm probably only going to do one more video this week. I'm going to do my Friday video because I need to take this weekend to kind of, as I mentioned, I'm going away, but also um, I kind of missed a lot of school. I missed three days of classes, even though I got released this afternoon. Um, I missed part of my Thursday classes, or my Tuesday classes, I missed all day yesterday, I missed today's classes. So. I have some work I've got to catch up on, um, so I'm just going to do one more video tomorrow, and then I'll do videos next week, 
and then hopefully I won't be missing any more videos, but I ask that you bear with me since I'm changing. I can't promise that. If something were to go wrong and I had to go back to the hospital, there's always a likelihood that there will be missed videos there. So um, I ask that you bear with me, and I thank you for sticking with me through the past couple of days. So I'll talk to you guys later.